to the weekly reflection on the gospel. Today is Saturday, the 28th of October, 2023, and we are going to reflect on the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. Let's open our hearts and listen. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. The Gospel of the Lord. One would think that a perfect God would choose a spotless lineage for his son Jesus on earth. However, when we review the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, we find a mixed bag of names of people who led lives that were far from perfect. Furthermore, when choosing his team, we would again expect Jesus to shortlist highly qualified and an esteemed set of people to carry on his mission. However, in today's Gospel we find that Jesus chooses 12 apostles, most of whom were simple, ordinary men, some even uneducated. He knew that one of them would go on to betray him, one would deny him, one would doubt him, and most of them would abandon him at a crucial point of his life. Yet, after spending an entire night in prayer, Jesus appointed them in accordance with the will of his Father. During his years of ministry, he would have been frequently reminded of what was to come and what to expect. At times, it would have been so difficult for Jesus to work with these people knowing their shortcomings. However, he never treated any of them with contempt. He always worked with everyone in love, keeping his focus on his mission at all times. When the journey was rough and the people accompanying him were flawed, he knew that his destination was a perfect plan of redemption and victory. In his infinite wisdom, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Author Paul Coelho in his book, The Archer, says, There are only two types of perfect people, those who are dead and those who are yet to be born. It means that the rest of us are all imperfect. Scripture affirms this, as Paul reminds us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It is to save sinners like us, imperfect people, that Jesus came upon the earth with the gift of his unconditional love. Acceptance being a key feature of his love, he did not condemn, but he accepted each one of his disciples exactly as they were. He did not expect them to first become perfect and then follow him. On the contrary, Following him led them onto the path of perfection, and the same applies to us. Do we constantly seek perfection in ourselves and attempt to hide our flaws by wearing a mask? As much as we pretend to be, let's understand and accept the fact that we can never be perfect. It's only our Father in Heaven who's perfect, and He loves us like crazy despite all our weaknesses, and He reminds us that we are perfected only in and through Him. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yes, it is only his grace that covers and completes us. Having lavished his grace upon us, he urges us to then extend it towards others. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. We often encounter difficult people in our families, societies, communities, offices or churches and we have a tough time dealing with them. We want to exclude them and sometimes wish that they weren't around so that our life would be easier and less stressful. At such times, it would serve us well to follow the example of Jesus 
and above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins instead of chasing perfection in ourselves and in others let us strive for excellence and hold ourselves to a standard of grace let us allow the light of his love to shine in and through us making us a perfect new creation in him then we too can joyfully declare i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me let us pray dear lord Thank you for accepting me despite all my shortcomings and for shedding your precious blood for me. Help me to stop hiding and pretending to be perfect and let your love wash, heal and cleanse me. Teach me to accept others just as you have loved and accepted me. We ask all of this in the mighty holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.